A former Wisconsin pastor has been found not guilty of some pretty serious accusations. What is the reaction of his family? What about the church he previously served? And what exactly went down with his accuser in court? We're going to get into all those details here in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple different ways you could do that. One, by simply hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can become a monthly contributor on my Patreon for joining as little as five bucks a month. That's patreon.com slash news. You can check out all the cool features over there. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Well, let's get into this because Robert Stein was the former pastor for Midvale Baptist Church in Wisconsin. And while there were some pretty serious allegations that were made against him, which led to his resignation from the church in August of 2023, but also he lost his license to run the church-associated daycare that was a part of it. Now, that's going to come into play here with these allegations. Now, according to his accuser, there were two separate incidents that occurred involving Pastor Robert Stein and this young, well, let's just say it, a little one here who was only 10 at the time that these events had happened. Now, she talked about how there were two separate incidents that occurred back in 2019. One of them, specifically, she said was on MLK Day, Martin Luther King Day, again, going to January of 2019. And then the second incident happened that same year in the summer. Um, and again, this was part of the church's you know, daycare and then summer camp programs. She talked about how she was only 10 at the time and said that inappropriate behavior happened to her at the hands of Robert Stein on both of those instances. Now, the initial uh, reports against Stein were not filed. The complaint was not filed against him until two years after in 2021. An investigation then went underway, you know, into these claims here made by the girl, which then eventually led to Robert Stein's um, arrest and then him losing again, losing his church. He resigned at the time in August of 2023. Now, he did say that he was not resigning because he was guilty of anything. He maintained his innocence throughout this entire ordeal, but he said that it would be in the best interest for everybody at Midvale Baptist Church for this to not be a distraction and for him to go ahead and step aside. Now, he had been leading the church for, you know, up until that point, uh, around 16 years. So he had a lot of time that was invested there. Previously, he served uh, as a pastor in a church in Iowa. He was a graduate from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary as well. Now, according to details from the court, this was a two-day process, uh, and the jury deliberated over their decision for about four hours until ultimately coming to the conclusion of finding Robert Stein not guilty on both of these counts of inappropriate behavior against a little one. And what was cited here were inconsistencies with the victim's story. And one of the examples that was given here was that she talked about how on the incident that occurred on MLK Day back in January of 2019, she cited that there was another adult there that was present at the time that the inappropriate behavior happened to her. Although that was refuted because it turned out that, well, on holidays, especially MLK, Stein would have been the only one who would have been running the church's daycare in the first place. Now, here's my thing. Look, and I don't know. I pray the truth comes out here because, look, just because the jury said it was not guilty doesn't mean that's the case. But let me say this because this is something that's not talked about. 
Why is the senior, because is it okay if I ask this question? Why is the senior pastor of a church also the one who is running the church's daycare? Does anybody else have that question like me? Because that's just a little bit strange. Because if you're the senior pastor of a church, you should be focusing on running the church. Preaching, preparing, you got a lot of other responsibilities on your shoulders. But to, you know, also at the same time be running the, you know, running the daycare on top of that, that's weird to me. And that's why, you know, when I when I hear this story, because I reported on, you know, all of this when it first came out. I remembered this. I'm like, oh, here we go. Let's see what's going on with this in an update. It didn't, it just didn't sit right with me. Again, why is the lead pastor also running the daycare and the summer camp programs? That should be given to other people to do that. Whereas you can go ahead and focus on, again, running the church as the senior pastor. So that's just strange to me. So you can, you know, you can listen to what the victim said here and it, you could definitely see it happen, right? You could definitely, you know, think that something like this could happen. You know, I've covered numerous cases like this where the pastor was also running, you know, a daycare or, or something involved with the school and, you know, they they were sentenced for it. Uh, so, again, it's, it's not out of the ordinary here when something like this happens. You got to take a real close look at the situation. But in the case here with this jury, they did not find enough evidence here and a lack of consistency in the victim's story to go ahead and, and convict and sentence the pastor. So uh, he appeared to be very relieved uh, after all the court proceedings. His family was by his side. And again, they maintained his innocence throughout this entire time. And so what happens from here, we'll have to see. Um, as far as him going back to Midvale Baptist Church, I don't see that happening. Remember, he did lose the license for the daycare. Uh, currently, right now, Midvale Baptist Church is still looking for a new senior pastor. And they have been having just interim preachers uh, filling that role on Sundays until they can get a permanent individual in there to go ahead and, uh, again, assume the senior pastor duties going forward. So that's the update with this case now. But I want to hear from you, especially if you are somebody who either previously attended Midvale Baptist or maybe you currently attend now and you like to chime in with your thoughts on this story. Are you on the pastor's side here? Do you believe that the verdict was right? Is he not guilty or do you feel that, you know, this was a mistake? In fact, that he was guilty and, you know, did these things that the victim is claiming. I will leave that up to you. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or you can become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash not by sight news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.